Hello students, this is Madhu Kamra from Durga Mahavidyale to speak on Merchant of Venice which is a play by William Shakespeare. Before I begin, let me tell you some introductory information about the play. First of all, I would like to tell you that this play is a comedy. By this time, you must be aware of the fact as to what is a tragedy, what is a comedy and a dramatic romance. So students, before I go into the details, let me make you revise what is a romantic comedy. A romantic comedy is one in which the focus is primarily on love, not necessarily between two lovers. Then this play is also recognized as a comedy. What exactly is a comedy? A comedy is such a play which makes a person primarily a protagonist that is the main character of the play realize his flaw by subjecting him to ridicule through self-embarrassment or realization of one's follies the character improves and by the end of the play there is a happy closure in this sense Merchant of Venice is a romantic comedy because you have the love story of Bassanio and Portia. You also have the parallel story of love between Jessica and Lorenzo. And you also have Portia's made in love with Bassanio's friend as three strands running throughout the length of the play. Now, let me tell you as to what does the title imply. Merchant of Venice is focused on merchant who is the key character in the play and his name is Antonio. Because he is a trader, so is the title merchant. It is equally interesting to know that the same title, Merchant of Venice, was reimagined as a play by a modern dramatist, Arnold Wesker. You may even recall that he died sometimes back in the year 2014. And he has to his credit some 50 plays. Isn't it remarkable? Now, coming to the storyline of the play. Shakespeare commonly borrowed his stories from two of the sources that were available during those days. One was Plutarch, who was a Greek historian, and the other was Hollinshed, who was an English historian. Now, commonly, you find that historians as chroniclers can be either live or dead. Live ones are those who work as singular entity, that is a single person collecting all the information and then putting a close when he breathes his last. Whereas the second one is commonly a group enterprise where not one but many people contribute and the task continues over years and so on. Now, here the story is interesting in the sense that the play is divided as commonly Shakespeare does into five acts. As you know that the first act is always an exposition where all the major and the minor characters are introduced and you also can assess as to what role they would play. What would be the mode of action and what would be the end product remains a matter of interest as you proceed with the length of the play. Now here in the very first act you come to know that Antonio is a Christian and is a trader 
by profession. So, Bassanio comes to Antonio to borrow money. Bassanio is a bosom friend of Antonio who needs money because he is monstrously in debt. Now, why does he need money? Because he wants to go to Belmont where lives a very rich lady looking for a good suitor through the lottery of caskets. Antonio has invested all his money in the cargoes that have gone out to fetch more money. So he is helpless to give the amount of money that is needed by his friend. As a result, Shylock is the only rescuer. Antonio asks Bassanio to go to Shylock to borrow money because he is full-fledged into the trade of money lending. On the other hand, Antonio is a money lender by choice. Whenever he finds that somebody is in economic distress, then he lends the money. Now. To which students you should remember that he charges no interest. Now. That is the cause of rivalry between Antonio and Shylock. When Bassanio goes to Shylock, he first abuses Antonio. Now. But Bassanio listens to him with meager retorts in order to quieten him. And then he says that he would do it. Unless and until a legal deed is signed by Antonio in order to stand as a guarantor for the money given to Bassanio. So, Bassanio is the borrower, but the life of Antonio is now at stake. Here, the conflict in the play takes a rise. Now, Shylock has laid his condition and Antonio is desperate to help his friend because he doesn't want to fail Bassanio in any of his needs that Antonio can fulfill. So, he is ready to sign the deed which says that in case Antonio fails to return 3,000 ducats which is the borrowed amount within 3 months which is the period, loan period then Shylock would be entitled legally to take a pound of flesh from the body of Antonio. Antonio takes the deed very easily because he is very sure that within three months his cargoes would come back home with big profit. Bassanio takes the money, the deed is signed and Shylock is now equal to his rival. On the other hand, we have Jessica who is Shylock's daughter but is very unlike her father. She exhibits all Christian values like love, mercy and at the same time she is also a follower of truth. Shylock's daughter Jessica is in love with Lorenzo and both of them they are aware of the fact that their love will never be approved by Shylock. So here we anticipate that both of them they would elope and materialize their love. On the other hand, 
we find that Portia has arranged the test for the suitors, which is a spread of three caskets of three different metals. You have gold, silver and lead. Now, according to the lottery, which is devised by her father, whosoever selects the right casket containing the portrait of Portia would be allowed to seek the hand of Portia in marriage. Before Basenio takes a trial, we have Prince of Morocco and Prince of Aragon who take a try. Both of them they fail because they pick wrong caskets, the gold and the silver. When Basenio comes, Portia is hesitant because she wants her lover to pick up the right casket and be her life partner. So she wants that Basenio should delay the trial through lottery. But Basenio insists that it should be done immediately and reluctantly Basenio is allowed to take the trial and he comes out successful. He picks up the lead which contains the portrait of Portia. The two are very happy and it is at this very juncture that the information reaches them that Antonio is now a ruined man. His cargoes are lost in sea and he is not financially healthy anymore. So much so that he cannot even return the amount that he owes to Shylock as a debtor. Bassinio at this stage confesses to Portia that he is a man of humble living and the wealthy show that he has made is primarily because of the big money that he has borrowed from Antonio. He also tells her about the deed that has been signed and that Antonio's life is now at risk. Portia is touched by the confession that is made by Brutus and the kind of friendship that he shares with Antonio. She realizes that the way Antonio has helped Bassanio reflects that they are not ordinary human beings. She is full of praises for her husband and they decide that their marriage should be immediately sealed through a legal procedure and no ceremonizing should be done unless and until Antonio's life is saved. 